Hi there, welcome to this week's video where we're actually going to look at or start looking at the largest and most complex joint in a horse's body and that's the stifle. So what makes up the stifle and where is the stifle? Well most people when you ask them where the stifle is know to point around this area. But the stifle area is actually made up of three different bones, a couple of different joints, um, some meniscus cartilage and a, and a whole host of muscles, tendons and ligaments around that stifle area. In fact, the stifle is equivalent to the human knee where the patella is the same as our kneecap. And we call our kneecap a patella as well. The difference between um, our knee and the horse's stifle however is that at rest their stifle is bent and at rest our knee stays straight. Okay so um, excuse my rudimentary drawing skills but you're just gonna have to put up with them. Um, hopefully hopefully Sky if you're watching this one I can get you to do some of this chalking up on the horses for next time so it's a bit more understandable. So there are two joints in the stifle there's the one that's between the femur and this little semicircle here, which is the patella. The other one is between the tibia and the femur. So within this joint, the patella in the femoral patella joint, the patella will then slide to wherever it needs to move along a groove in the femur or the thigh bone. The patella is actually a sesamoid bone, which is like a bone or a nodule that just forms in among the um, tendons. And the position of the patella changes depending on whether the leg is either flexed, which is in the bent position, or extended in the stood position. The patella actually attaches here to um, the quadricep muscle. So you can see that um, the strength of muscles around this area are really important to the horse. So this muscle I've got here in yellow is essentially the um, quadricep muscle. And it is, this muscle here is the tensor fascia latae, and that actually covers that muscle. So, um, but this, these muscles here connect into the patella. This muscle here that you see in orange is called the bicep femoris. Fred's smelling something very unusual today. Um, and so you can see how these all really um, concentrate around the area of the stifle. So again, the strength of these muscles are very important for the horse's hind end movement. So the function of the stifle is to, number one, assist in the hind limb movement. And it does this um, extremely well through the recipient Thank you, Fred. It does this extremely well through the reciprocal apparatus. The other thing that the stifle does is enable stability in the horse when they're standing through the use of the stay apparatus. Now, I'm gonna try and turn him around a bit here so he can have a look at my terrible drawing on the other side again to explain the reciprocal apparatus. So when the horse moves its hind end, it contracts and puts, um, contracts upwards, I guess, the um, gluteal muscles here and puts pressure on this muscle that runs along here called the peroneus tertius. It is acting at this, this muscle is actually acting as a tendon in this point. And you can see then, if you look at this terrible drawing where I've represented the yellow with bones and these are the um, tendons, that actually, as this then puts pressure and moves the hind leg, we'll see if Fred will give it to me. The, it simultaneously puts pressure on the attached tendons underneath as well. So not only do we get simultaneous flexion of the stifle and the hock, the superficial digital flexor tendon that runs all the way down behind the back of the horse's leg puts pressure then on the lower joints and the phalanges or the bones within the hoof. And what we end up getting is flexion of the whole leg. Again. The 
So what they mean by reciprocal apparatus is by a movement of the thigh, actually passively and simultaneously moves all the other joints of the leg with very minimal effort. This knowledge is actually really important. The reason is that any lamenesses in the hind end or any issues with any areas of this reciprocal apparatus is actually going to result in some significant lameness issues and can sometimes be hard for us lay people to actually decipher whereabouts within that hind limb the lameness is actually coming from. Okay, and the other reason that the stifle is super important to the hind limb is its role in the stay apparatus. Now the stay apparatus is where the horse can actually lock a leg both or both legs and enable with very little energy that to stay in place. This is the mechanism that allows a horse to have really deep rests, light sleeps while they're standing up, even if they're resting one of the other hind limbs. What happens when using the stay apparatus is that the horse literally locks this area up. So what happens is the patella then moves down and locks over a section of the femur bone. So this is when the stifle locks appropriately. So if a horse can't lock its stifle, then it doesn't have the ability to just stand there and turn all the other muscles off. So you can see through these, um, this tiny area is a fairly important spot for the horse, but it's also fairly complex the way it's set up internally with a lot of soft tissue. And again, when something goes wrong in that area, it's really hard to make an assumption over what that is. But a lot of horses do have stifle problems. Some of the type of stifle problems we see are a locking patella, upward fixating patella, um, just simply weakness. We get um, arthritis, um, OCD disease in younger horses. And any of, the, any of the issues that you get in this area, you can understand are fairly significant to the horse. Also understanding this reciprocal mechanism helps to understand why for us, it's hard to determine whether something is being caused through stifle or hock problems. So thanks Fred for being semi-patient. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get notification of next week's video where we start to look a little bit more in depth at the stifle and what sort of things we can do to make sure the stifle's working properly well, stretch the muscles and keep it nice and strong. Thanks, see you next week.